In this video, we'll demonstrate how to leverage ScaleArc IDB auto failover in a multi-master MySQL environment. Our goal is to use ScaleArc IDB to split reads and writes so only one master is being written to at any time while leveraging the other master for read traffic. We will show how to use ScaleArc IDB's auto failover functionality to failover writes to the secondary master if the primary one fails without having to make any changes to the application or database. We will review the various configuration options available in ScaleArc IDB and discuss the best options for a multi-master MySQL deployment. First, let's review a quick diagram of what this demo environment looks like. As you can see, we have the ScaleArc load generator servers that will be sending traffic through ScaleArc IDB destined for a pair of MySQL database servers configured in a multi-master deployment. IDB will send the writes to a single master while dynamically load balancing read traffic across both the primary master and the standby master while monitoring replication lag. For more information on the replication lag aware load balancing, you can reference the ScaleArc video library and other resources on the ScaleArc website. For the purposes of this demo, we don't have any slaves hanging off the masters, but ScaleArc IDB can just as easily leverage additional slaves off either or both masters when dynamically load balancing read traffic. Now let's go to the ScaleArc IDB administration page to get started. I already have a couple clusters here, but I'm going to create a new cluster and start from scratch for this demo so you can see just how easy it is to configure IDB for a new database cluster. First, we'll click the Add Cluster button. I'll provide a cluster name. This is just an identifying name for the administration and analytics screens. Then I'll select an inbound virtual IP, the TCP port to listen on. This combination is the connect string your applications will use to send their database traffic. Then we select the outbound VIP. Next, we got to provide the database credentials. The user here is used by IDB to check replication status as well as provide some health checking monitors. The user needs to have some elevated privileges, so I'll just go ahead and use root for our purposes here. And now let's add the server. Click on add server. I'll provide the IP address of our primary master, the default port of 3306. This server is going to be our primary write server, so I'm going to use the server role read write. We'll talk about the other roles in a server when we add the secondary server. We'll use the rest of the defaults and add the server. Now let's add the secondary server. This will be dot 13 using the same standard port. Now let's talk about the remaining roles for the server type here. The read plus write role is used to designate the write server. The read role is used to designate a server that should only receive reads, traditionally a slave. Then we have two standby roles. A server designated as a standby can be used by IDB as a failover server for writes in the case the current write server is marked down. You can have a standby server that also accepts read traffic while it's in standby mode. That's designated by the standby plus read. Or you can have a standby server that shouldn't see any traffic unless there is a failover. For the purposes of our demo, we want to leverage the standby master for read traffic so we can get some offload from the primary master and scale horizontally. We'll click Add Server, and let's complete the cluster setup. This will take just a moment. And now before we send traffic to the cluster, we need to add the databases that IDB should be configured for. Click on Users and DBs. We'll click the root user. And this will show us all the available databases. And for our demo, we just need the CMS database. Save that. Go back. Now the cluster is up and running and ready to receive traffic. Now let's launch the ScaleArc Load Gen tool. We won't go into detail on the load generation tool options here. I already have it pre-configured to send load to the ScaleArc Act demo cluster. So we'll launch the load. 
And now let's switch over to the Scalarc IDB Live Monitor. Let's look at these three charts quickly. In this first chart, you can see the requests that are coming in from the load gen tool. We have client connections that are being multiplexed across the persistent server connections that IDB has established to the MySQL servers. Next, you can see the read-write distribution. This is simply a function of the type of load I'm sending through the tool. We have mostly reads, some writes, about an 80-20 split. And then the last chart is something we'll be watching since you can see the traffic distribution between the servers in the cluster. You can see my primary server, dot 12, the orange line, is getting more of the traffic since it's getting reads and writes. My secondary master, dot 13, or the blue line, is only getting read traffic right now. So let's jump back to our load gen windows. And as you can see, one of the columns we want to keep an eye on is the far right. That's going to give us the total number of errors the load gen tool is seeing. Currently, both of the clients are humming along fine with no errors. Now let's go configure the auto failover settings for this cluster. Let's review each of the settings here. Failure timeout is simply the amount of time in seconds a read-write server needs to be detected as down before a failover event is triggered. IDB performs 10 health checks a second on a server, so the default setting of 0.3 seconds equates to three consecutive failed health checks. Flip-flop timeout allows you to configure the minimum time to wait between failover events in order to prevent scenarios where IDB is constantly flipping back and forth between write servers. This setting only applies to auto failover and not a manual failover, which can be done at any time. Next, you select your replication type for the backend databases, asynchronous or synchronous. IDB has different internal failover mechanics depending on the replication type, and you can see that some of the configuration options down below go away as you switch replication types. For our demo here, I'm using MySQL internal replication for multi-master, so I'll select asynchronous. Failover type is where you tell IDB how to determine the best server to failover to. IDB based tells IDB that it should use the server rules you define in the cluster to make its decision. IDB will go through the servers in a cluster and fail over to the next available standby server in the list. IDB also allows you to make an API call to an external authority to determine the correct server to fail over to. You, have your, you may have your own method for promoting a slave or leverage a third-party utility like MHA. And IDB is capable of making an external API call to this external source. You can contact Scalarc support for sample API calls, but for the purposes of this demo, we'll stick with IDB base since we're leveraging multi-master. Next, we have switch delay time, which is only available for asynchronous replication types. This allows you to configure a delay before IDB fails over the roles. You may want to allow a longer period to make sure any external promotion scripts are completed. For my demo here, I'll leave the default of five seconds. Wait for sync is also only available for asynchronous replication types and tells IDB to check replication sync status before failing over. You can specify the number of times to retry and the interval between retries as well. I'll go ahead and leave the defaults here as well. At this point I have auto failover configured. Let's turn it on and let's just do a quick manual failover just to test this out. Looking at the live monitors we can see that dot 12 is getting most of the traffic right now the orange line. And you can see now on the cluster configurations that dot 12 has been changed to the standby plus read role and dot 13 has taken over the primary write server role. On the live monitors you can see that the traffic has flip-flopped as well. What's interesting here is during the little failover period there's a slight hiccup which is normal because we're not, we're not failing over 
right away. As you can see in the charts here, IDB has a surge queue mechanism. And I'll remove some of these lines so you can see what happened. So during that hiccup, during the failover process before dot 13 took over the read write role, the write traffic was sent into IDB surge queue. You can see by this brown or purple line rocketing up. If I go back to the load gen tool, you can see that during the manual failover, we still have zero errors in the right column. So now let's go back and we'll just fail everything back over. You can see the surge queue kicked in again during that failover. And you can see once again that our load gen tool reported no errors. And the traffic flip flopped back over again where dot 12 is now the primary. We're still getting a decent amount of, amount of traffic reads and writes. Now let's go ahead and perform an auto failover. I'll go ahead and click back to the clusters and I'll bring up my terminal. Now let's go ahead and try and break something. I've logged in to my primary write server here, 10.0.0.12, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the MySQL service. This will be an abrupt stop, mimicking a failover, a failure. As you can see here, MySQL is shutting down. We can see right here that the traffic hits an error. The red dot indicates that IDB has detected a failover. And now we're initiating the auto failover. Dot 13 has now taken over the read write role and traffic has kicked back up. The brief interruption here is the five second delay setting that we had in the auto failover settings. And if we scroll back up, we can see again that the surge queue kicked in and so all the writes that were coming in went into the surge queue. And then once the server was available, that queue reduced. Now, because we're running at diminished load, our surge queue is still kicking in in IDB. We have both reads and writes being queued, but that's a feature of IDB to help prevent application issues during surges in traffic. You can see here that we're still getting read traffic and write traffic and dot 13 has taken over the master role and is receiving writes and reads at somewhat diminished capacity versus the two servers as expected. Now we did get some errors and those because if we look at the load gen tool here, we will see some errors here because any queries that were in flight during the failover are going to be lost and this should be captured by your application. The key here is the application servers will not have to reconnect to a different database server. IDB proxies those connections and handles the failover gracefully. At this point, we've been able to demonstrate how IDB can be leveraged to automatically fail over write servers between multi-master nodes in a MySQL environment. Now, before I bring up the dot 12 MySQL server, we can go ahead and mimic a production scenario here. What you'll want to do in a production environment is come into IDB and change the setting on this server to take it offline. We'll go ahead and update that server. And as you can see, IDB will gray this out. Now let's go ahead and log back in to the MySQL server and start the service. Now remember this wasn't a graceful shutdown. So the MySQL server is up and running. It's green again here. We can see the primary server now. The primary server had a slight hiccup here as it was initiating synchronization again with the other master. But if you look at IDB, 
once again, the surge queue kicked in during that little hiccup. Now we've got the secondary server up and running and we can go ahead and configure or change the server role and bring it back online in a standby mode plus read traffic. Now we can see dot 12, which used to be our primary, is back up and running, receiving traffic. It's getting the read traffic. You can see now our capacity is climbed back up. We're handling mm, slightly double the reads and more writes since the primary server now has more processing available. And we're accepting more client connections. And you can see now our surge queue has gone away with the addition of the additional capacity. So now we have enough connections to handle all the incoming requests. And we're back up and running in normal operation. If I wanted to go ahead and switch back over and make dot 12 the primary server again, I can go back to the auto failover settings and perform a manual failover. And now you can see we're back in our normal operating condition with another queue situation here as I did that minor failover or manual failover. And everything is back to normal.